Good morning. It's Friday. Friday afternoon, actually, and welcome to Saba's Way of Life. And you know, it's been quite a few days since I've posted here because the future is offline. So what I mean by that, I actually didn't even realise because I have been so engaged, when we're engaged in actually living our lives, living is the key word, and building our community and not just talking about it, because we've all heard it, I've mentioned it so many times, when that happens your everyday becomes very busy doing just that and you don't get time. I don't know where the last six days have gone. And it's not because I'm slaving the way the system wants you to slave every day and work like a rat on a wheel, a mouse on a wheel, come back and all your money. I was just talking to the postwoman about this this morning and she said, all of it, I don't save anything, all of it goes on bills. And when that when you are living a life where I'm not actually doing that, a lot of people are, I've done all that, but what I'm saying is there are many, many people, and even those of you who are working, who have a choice that in your free time, get offline, and that means off the TV as well, and start engaging. You know, I, you, your your heart fills up, Your the cells in your body start to heal. It's all about community engagement, engagement, not being alone, interaction with other people, looking into someone's eyes, touching someone's flesh, understanding that, that it is such an important thing. And that's where change happens. So that's why it's been so long since I've, I've, be, I've posted and so much has got done. The garden's changed. I'll do another garden update tomorrow morning if I can. It's just a busy day today. It's Friday. I'm in the kitchen and I'm going to be cooking. I'll just share with you, hopefully show you tomorrow, a beautiful bilau rice. And I'm going to make it with chops. These are mutton chops, which are the long chops. I'm, I'm defrosting them at the moment because they have a lot of flavour, they have a lot of fat on them, that in a palau rice, the actual nourishment and flavour comes from the fat cooking with the water and then kind of amalgamating, it's a synergy of the two together that gives the nourishment through the rice and of course the meat. But it's mainly the flavours of the fat that are felt and tasted in the rice, together with the rice being cooked in ghee. You don't need a lot of ghee because you've got the fat from cooking the meat with the most beautiful herbs and spices, not chili. And then it's served with a beautiful raita, which is a, a yogurt, and I'm I'm actually boiling some milk now, unhomogenized milk for a homemade yogurt. Raw milk when I get a better sauce, the one I've used now, I don't trust it because it doesn't taste right. And I I really trust my I really trust my inner tuition and instinct for that matter. On that I need to to take a look at that in more detail. So what I wanted to talk to you about today, and I am actually gonna take a seat because I've been on my feet since five o'clock this morning. What I wanted to talk to you about today is going back to a video I put up that was taken down because I used a few wrong words. And I want to explain, this is important, get a pen and paper, it's education. Everything I do is education. Um, I want to first explain to you how systemic poison works in plants. Um, and then I'm going to hope that you're all astute enough to understand what I'm talking about. So I've got weeds in my driveway and um, they keep growing up because it's a driveway and it's kind of paved and in between these weeds keep coming up, horrible weeds. And I kind of just pull them out, but they just keep coming back. And I've got to a stage where I'm thinking, you know what, I, I have to put some poison down. I'm not growing anything on that on, on that part of the driveway. Um, I'm not even putting pots near it. So that's at the back. So I decided, you know what, I am going to put some systemic poison down. Now, what does that mean? See, the way um, 
so it's you can you can buy these bottles of poison with glyphosate in it and all sorts of other horrible toxins in and what it does to the plant is rather than just you kill it straight away what it does it has poisons inside that go through so let's say i've i've diluted it in water and then on a nice warm day which is what they recommend on a dry day you then pour the um, water with the poison over the plant greenery and the idea is it goes through the skin of the plant and slowly it goes down the, the through the leaves down the stem all the way down the stem to all the other leaves in between down into the root and that takes some day so it's going to every organ it's going through every organ of that weed that plant where eventually the actual system that keeps the plant alive dies that's why systemic poison is so much more powerful at killing the plant because the plant will not be able to survive once the plant's immune system is destroyed and then it withers away and it dies and then eventually you just pull it out and stick it in the compost heap. I wouldn't stick it in the compost heap because it's got poison in it so I'll put it in the dustbin. I try to avoid doing that. I put weeds in the compost heap but I definitely wouldn't put systemic poisoned plants in the compost. Not, not a chance. I don't even know why I said that. That was a mistake. So um, that's how it works and it takes time. It, systemic poison doesn't work straight away. It, 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 it's very deceptive to the plant. So the plant thinks it's something nice coming in and it ingests it and it's just very deceptive. It's a bit like the systemic poison, probably exactly like the systemic poison that they use for rats, which is such a cruel way of killing rats where it's not just um, a rat trap or something, but it's actually a poison that really tastes really lovely but over a period of days with with rats I think it's about a week it destroys all the organs inside and it's very painful for them and it's a long and prolonged death I've used it in the past until I kind of realized what it does and it's not nice and I've seen a couple of mice walking around when I had used it this is going back some years in fact not even that long ago and I've stopped now but I had an infestation of them but still when you realize how it works it's not good and I saw this mouse tiny mouse walking around very slowly you know it was like a like the dead man a dead man walking and it was just walking couldn't run away from me and there was blood coming out of its the side and it looked really pathetic and eventually it just killed over and died. And of course, it wouldn't be obvious to anyone else to know what happened to that mouse because the poison was given to it a week, two weeks ago. So I want to now talk to you about how the um, immune system works. I actually shared this video in that I shared this link in that video, but it was taken down after 10 minutes. Um, and this is really interesting, and I'm gonna put the link below. It's from Dr. Dr. Shiva again, <laughs> Dr. Shiva Ayodhani, unbelievable information. He explains PhD level stuff to, to somebody who is a five-year-old can understand it, you know, so to speak. So what I want you to understand these are facts. This is how the immune system works. And most of the mainstream doctors today are not taught this stuff because they're taught something very different. Um, many of them may know it, but it's not their kind of formal education. 
Anyway, and I'm not quoting this from my own head. This is quoted from Dr. Eva. He puts it in a much better way. So watch that video below. This is just to um, to incite your interest If for those of you who have a thirst for the truth and for knowledge. Um, so when, let me explain. It was always good to explain. Let's say I'm going to catch cold and I'm starting to feel sniffly, right? So I have a part of my immune system is called the innate immune system. And the innate immune system is made up of our, our skin, our sensory organs and, and our skin and the smell, the nose touch. And when that immune system, when I'm feeling the sniffles, comes straight in to action, what it does, it sends all these soldiers in that don't have any particular job. It's like, imagine the pawns. Let's say you've got a chessboard and every single piece on the chessboard at the back has got a job, the king and the queen, and, the, and they have a particular structure and a way to defeat the enemy. But the pawns are just like your average soldiers. And so your innate system have, has these soldiers that just all come in. We're all coming to help you. You've got the first 72 hours to deal with this toxin or virus that's coming in. Because Yes. So you've got the first 72 hours to deal with whatever it is that's coming in that's giving you those symptoms. And um, many of the things we talk about, like if it's any form of cold, with as soon as you feel it, um, you've got to be very in tune with yourself. You know, you take a whole head of garlic and I don't, I don't want to digress now. You know, I've learned this. I mean, I, we've been doing this for years in our family, but Dr. Shiva also has talked about how important garlic is because he explains why and what it does inside the body I don't want to digress so let me go back and carry on with what I'm saying um and so the, you've got 72 hours now if after 72 hours you haven't dealt with it effectively or your body's not able to hand handle it itself maybe the immune system's weak already what happens is that the innate immune system is, let's say here, that's the innate immune system. And then on this side, you've got the adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system is uh, where all the antibodies are. And then they come in to fight the virus and they have a particular job to do. And if your body's in good health and your immune system is in, in good health, the, the you you have a host of antibodies who understand this virus coming in because you've been exposed to other viruses over the donkeys of years that you've been out playing in the mud and and living a, a real way of life and touching animals and cows and horses and the body's got used to creating these antibodies to help you right isn't that how we all live? We go go and get dirty in the mud and I hold my chickens and I don't wash my hands with antibacterial rubbish because I need the body to deal with these this dirt that's coming in and then strengthen my immune system, right? So the adaptive immune system, which is here, then it releases all these antibodies to fight the viruses. Now, hopefully it doesn't get to that level, but for... Funnily enough, for the vast majority, it does. And uh, in between the, the innate and the adaptive, there is a system, it's like a messaging system called the interferon system. Now, it's only until relatively recently that scientists have realised that the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system are actually connected. I mean, kind of common sense, isn't it? The body is an interconnection of systems that all speak to each other. A bit like trees and their roots in a forest, they all talk to each other, we're the same. So it's relatively recently, and I'm giving you a lot of expression here so that you get it. It's relatively recently that scientists have discovered that the interferon system is connects the two and they all talk to each other so it's very important so that let's now now i'm going to explain why i'm saying this and i hope i'm explaining it properly when we are given so this is a natural system that's how god or our maker or the mind behind the universe made us so that it's a system that works in tune and everything's talking to each other so that we heal and we stay in good health and we live our natural system state we're all individuals 
But what's happened with the progress of medicine, allopathic medicine, based on wartime medicine, which is deal with the symptom and not the cause and and fix the problem at hand, forget everything else, but fix it and get you back out on the battlefield. That way of healing is still prevalent today. And as a result of that way of healing, the, the, the old um, came in. And, you know, you had measles and mumps and rubella and all these things. And the most recent one that we had in 2020. And they came in. And the idea behind it was, um, was that it can bypass the innate. Remember, the innate is here and the adaptive is here. And the interferon is talking in between. We don't need to go to the innate. The interferon, they completely ignored because it doesn't do anything, does it? And... When when you have the old thing, then it goes, it sends antibodies directly down into the adaptive immune system. And the idea behind it is we'll go straight to the adaptive and it will deal with that horrible virus that's coming in. But of course, there's a couple of things you've got to bear in mind. The first step is it's completely bypass nature, what nature does naturally. This, that you might think, well, that's a good thing. If you've got something horrible coming in, you need to deal with it. We're lucky we've progressed that way. The second thing is, what do they put in it? Because in order for it to work, and the anti, this is a fact, um, this is not, you know, this is science, this is a fact, they have to put certain things that cause the antibodies to come out, like um, I think it's aluminium or some heavy metal or something that they put in there that, that then incites the adaptive immune system to say, oh my God, we've got to release the antibodies to, to protect ourselves. That's what they're trying to do to get the antibodies to come in and kill that thing. Now, um, this is something I want you to bear in mind, right? When that happens and you've bypassed those two, you know, you've heard of um, the immune response, autoimmune response, where the your immune system... This is happening a lot, isn't it, in the last, certainly in the last 50 years, but it's happening a lot recently, where the the body's own immune system is attacking itself. It's an autoimmune reaction. It's become a verbatim thing. Now, oh, yeah, I've got an autoimmune problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, my doctor told me I've got an autoimmune. Now, this is the thing. Follow here, and I'm going to try and explain it properly. When that happens, when, 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 and it goes into the adaptive immune system and the antibodies are released. There's no messenger, there's no messenger or signal to tell the adaptive immune system to stop producing antibodies. You see, it gets very confused. And when it gets confused, the immune system starts to attack itself. Whereas if you, if you, lived in a natural way and you didn't have that what happens is the interferon system says to the adaptive hey let's say you did it naturally without that and then the body released its antibodies in the adaptive immune system but it's come through the innate gone through the adaptive and all these messages are taking place while it's doing that the adaptive immune system through the interferon says enough you don't need to release any more antibodies. It's okay. Enough now. Stop. And so it stops and then you heal. Because the systems are talking to each other. It's a feedback loop. We talked about dumb systems and intelligent systems. And when you're using nature's principles, you're using an intelligent system. Whereas when you are, when, when this happens, your body doesn't have that intelligence anymore to talk to itself and talk to each part. And it becomes a dumb system. Input, put it in, stick that out, and that's it. And so there's no feedback loop. There's no sensor there that's saying, stop, stop releasing those antibodies, otherwise you're going to attack me. Now, do you get it? Think about this. Now, underneath the interferon system sits your microbiome where you've got millions and trillions of bacteria and viruses far more than what you are as with human cells and they're all interacting with the interferon and I'm not going to go into that now but those of you who know me and who followed my telegram from 2020 will know that I'm I've studied very deeply on the immune system and I'm learning all the time it's a subject uh, of great interest to me and where my future is going to be in healing people but actually 
that as time goes on, um, I, I'm beginning to realise, not beginning, I know now that it's everything. The immune system is the seat of health. Everything. It's everything. So um, I wanted to share that with you today and hopefully I was a good girl and said it in a proper scientific manner that's just the absolute truth because I just really don't want to lie anymore. It's awful having lies and then being shut down. So I wanted to give you facts and truth and, I, and I'm going to back that up with science underneath with a... Um, with a video and when and I'm also going to share the link for Truth Freedom Health because I honestly recommend all of you whether you're in the States or in the UK to attend one of the open houses it's every Thursday at four o'clock UK time I'm I'm talking to my UK audience mainly but if you're in the US um, that would be 11 o'clock EST it might be a different place depending on where you are in the US but these open houses are fantastic because they're educational and in that you understand you start learning everything about health truth and freedom and which are all interlinked because you understand the politics of health which is important because for you to actually care about you and your family you have to understand health politics to make you see what's going on around the world and how it all works and therefore you can take charge of your own health you can take charge of your own freedom. You can take charge of understanding your own truth. The truth is not fixed. It's constantly being refined. Refinement of truth. Remember that it's dynamic. But you start learning. So ultimately you start learning how to think because we have outsourced our thinking to a third party. Don't do that. Take power of your thinking. I'm going to put the link down below as well. All right. I hope that helped. By teaching you, it's like a pedagogy system. It's helping me. The mantra that Dr. Shiva has, and I've always had, is to learn. I've always done. Those who used to be in my Telegram group, this is all I did. Learn, teach and serve. That is why we are here. And I remember saying to people once, I'm not a guru, stop calling me a guru. Well, I take that back because you've got to understand what guru means. And I've, I've gone back and checked. And the guru is a dispeller of darkness. Each one of us can be our own guru. And a guru teaches others how to be a guru in whatever area they're skilled at and they're gifted at. So I am a dispeller of darkness because I want you to see the light and then be the light for others to shine as well. That is the characteristic of a true leader, not to control and exercise control over people, but to share their knowledge with others so that they can share and be the light. I have a call coming in. Have a lovely day and read the notes below. Bye.